not enough people logged in. Simran, are you are you okay with solitary pulmonary nodule? Have you read the guidelines? Yes, sir. I I went through the guidelines. I I read them, sir. Okay. I'm just giving you a heads up start because I I want you to have a good discussion. Okay. I could have kept quiet and just bought it up at the last minute. I thought let's <laughs> give them yes, sir. A, a fair chance. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Five o'clock. It's five o'clock. Let's start recording. Oh, it's already recording. Okay, Nikhil, uh, welcome yes, to our uh, session of solitary pulmonary nodules. Uh, so, Nikhil, you are sitting in your clinic, and uh, the guy in the executive health checkup phones you, and he says, "Dr. Nikhil, there's a 45-year-old corporate guy uh, who has come for an executive health checkup." And uh, he got a chest X-ray which showed some lesion in the right upper lobe, and then went on to have a CT scan. And so this is the CT scan. Uh, uh, number one, describe the CT to me. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, CT scan uh, chest with lung window showing uh, it. Uh, Hetero, uh, heterogeneous uh, irregular lesion in the right upper lobe of the lung. Any size you want to give it? Uh, stillate appearance. Okay. Any size you want to call it? Uh, sir, size I cannot make out. I'll, I, I need a uh, caliper. Uh, yeah, I know, but you've got the trachea in front of you, isn't it? That's why I asked you specifically. What's the mm -hmm. diameter of a trachea? Uh, 1.5 centimeter. Yeah, 2.5 to 3 centimeters. So, what is the size of this? So, when mm. when an examiner asks you a definite question, he's actually giving you a hint. Okay, so just guess, guesstimate a size. Uh, one centimeter. One centimeter. Less than one centimeter is what. Less than one centimeter. Okay, it probably looks less than one centimeter. Okay, describe the shape of the thing. Hmm. So it's a. Uh, Star shape. I, I, still it, still it, still it, still it. Still it. Any any other word you want to use? Irregular. Any other word you want to use to describe this? So speculated. Speculated is the word. Okay, I want you to use the word speculated. Speculated. Not, not still it. Not star shape. This is speculated. What is the significance of this speculated lesion? Uh, so the spe uh, speculated lesion uh, indicate a malignancy. May be a malignancy. May be a malignancy. The high risk of this being a malignancy. Okay. Malignancy. So anything else you want to ask this guy, or you just want to go ahead and? I'm. Uh, sir, I'll ask. I like to ask him for is there any previous images available? Okay. Uh, nothing available. This is the first time he's come. It's the first executive I'll check. I like to uh, have a detailed uh, history in terms of loss of weight, loss of appetite, uh, smoking history. Totally asymptomatic. Totally asymptomatic. Is he a smoker? Ah, good question. I like that. So, yes, he is a smoker. Uh, how many cigarettes per day and how many years? Uh, been 20 a day for the last about 20 years. Uh, so, it's a 20 pack year. It's a, it's a significant smoking history. Okay, significant smoking. Anything uh, else in terms of description of this nodule? Do you want to tell me another word? Whenever we talk, talk about a solid pulmonary nodule, there is one word which should be used to describe it. Uh, so it's what, completely what surrounded the by the lung. Completely surrounded by the lung parenchyma. So what is the word I am looking for? There are three types of solitary pulmonary nodules. So what is peripheral? The word I'm peripheral. That one is okay, but what is the word I am looking for? Simran, what are the three types of solitary pulmonary nodules? Uh, so the solitary pulmonary nodules are um, uh, solid nodules, uh, part solid nodules, uh, uh, and uh, ground glass, uh, pure ground glass opacity. Excellent, excellent. So always remember these three words, okay? 
So whenever you get a patient with a solitary pulmonary nodule, you must describe it with giving me a description of one of these three. Yes, so sir. now Nikhil, tell me what is this? This is a purely solid nodule. Okay, so now what do you mean by a solid nodule? What do you mean by a part solid nodule? And what do you mean by a ground glass of uh, this uh, solid nodule. Radiologically. Uh, the solid nodule is... The houndstone unit more than um, uniformly houndstone unit is more than uh, so, uh, ex, um, like to pass. What me. do you mean? You just told me it's a nodule. So radiologically, what do you mean by a solid nodule? What is the, what are you seeing in front of you that makes you think or call it a solid? There is no there is no hetero, uh, there is no heterogeneity it's a it's a homogeneous yeah but why are you calling it a solid nodule as opposed to a ground glass appearance so there is no cystic component what is the difference between a solid nodule in a radiology and a ground glass what is the definition okay simran you take it what is the definition of a solid nodule so for in a, so so for solid nodules, you not be able to see the bronchovascular markings through it. Absolutely correct. In a ground glass appearance, in a ground glass appearance, you will be able to see the bronchovascular markings, and in a part solid nodules, the component which you can see is solid, and the other part is the fantastic. Bronchus. That is the answer. You will be asked this in the in the exam. What is the definition of a solid nodule? So the definition of a solid nodule is when you cannot see the bronchovascular markings through it, and the definition of a ground glass is that. There is something there, but you can still see the bronchovascular markings, okay? And a mixed nodule, which is part solid, part GGO, is a mix of the two, okay? So, okay, so whenever we, I'll, I'll just go through a few guidelines for you. I want you to, I also want to teach while I'm questioning you. So the next few slides, whoever is listening, uh, what is the audience like? How many have you got? We got 15 people. 15. Uh, just quickly, how many of you are exam going, guys? Just out of the 15. How many are exam going or is everybody in exam going potentially? Just quickly say yes or no. Okay, so everybody's exam going, for example. So now my next few slides are important because if you ever get a ground, uh, a solitary pulmonary nodule in the exam, these are the questions that you will be asked in the exam, okay? So first I'll take you through it. And these questions which I am actually going to ask, show you just now, come from the BTS guidelines, okay? So in fact, the first slide of BTS guidelines directly gives you the questions, okay? So everything that you're seeing on this page are the questions that we ask in the exam very, very clearly. So this is beautiful slide because if you write down this question and you write down the answer below it, there is no question in solitary pulmonary nodule that people can ask you. So this is very important and I'll go through the questions with you, okay? So first and foremost is the question that gets asked is root of presentation and clinical context and the different characteristics in solitary pulmonary nodule. So I just asked you that question. Nikhil, the question that I asked you is, why is this a solitary pulmonary? What is the mm -hmm. definition of a solitary pulmonary? It's the characteristic of a solitary pulmonary. That is the question that I asked you. So if you had read this, uh, slide or if you had read this paper you would have known the answer directly okay so this question gets asked to you so please when you finish this session with me please write mm. down these questions on the top and please write down the answers to these questions and yes, if you sir. if you know it by heart solitary pulmonary nodule is cracked there is no way they can ask you anything beyond this okay the next question is if it is a solitary pulmonary nodule then i'm going to ask you what are the techniques of Nodule dis detection, what is the significance of a chest X-ray versus CT scan? Now just go through all of this. I'm not asking you this. So if it's a benign, what are the features of uh, features of a benign on a chest X-ray CT scan? If it is a if it is surveillance, if you're going to tell me this is needs surveillance, then is it appropriate? How should it be done and how often? This is very important, this slide. This yes. is the question which definitely comes in the exam on a solitary pulmonary nodule. When do you do CT surveillance? Is it indicated in this patient or should you discharge this patient? 
how often should you do it and how should you do it whether it's a ct scan it's a low dose ct scan or is it a pet scan okay so i'm giving yes, you these questions right at the start of our discussion i will go through all of this with you in a minute so please get this what are the other imaging that you can use so what is the role of pet scan in a solitary pulmonary nodule and when should you do a pet scan or should you not do a pet scan okay mm -hmm. so please take these questions down and these are directly from the bts guidelines so again there are two types of biopsies that you can do a non surgical and a surgical biopsy so what tests are available for a non surgical biopsy when should you use it and what are the problems or complications of a non surgical biopsy this is talking about ct guided biopsy okay if it's a surgical biopsy when should you do it how should you do it which means vats open stuff like that what are the problems with it okay and then treatment if you're talking about treatment without pathology then when do you do treatment without pathology how should you do it and what are the problems with it okay and so <coughs> if you can get me the answers for all of these questions which i put up then your case is done okay there is nothing more in an spm that they can ask beyond these questions and this is directly from the bts guide okay so now nikhil my question to you again is define a solitary pulmonary nodule for me lesion in the lung less than 3 cm and completely surrounded by the lung parenchyma very good very good what else that is more it should be a peripheral location okay no per central it's okay spn can be central also there is no anatomical landmark which says this is peripheral this is central the center what else are in what is what else is included in the definition simran what is included in the definition Uh, sir <laughs> there should be no associated pleural effusion there should be no associated Very lymph nodes uh, there good. should be no associated um, atelectasis and it should be uh, 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 it should be incidentally detected on an x ray or a ct scan okay yes good very good so this is the definition i want you to know this by heart and please tell it to me by heart okay so yes, nikhil sir. i want once again for you to please repeat this and i will go back Is this okay with everybody that we do a few repetitions so that we learn how to answer in perfect, the exam? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So come on, Nikhil, tell me, how do you define solitary, a solitary pulmonary nodule? Solitary pulmonary nodule is defined as a lesion in the lung less than three centimeter, completely surrounded by the lung parenchyma, with absence of uh, another lesion, pleural effusion, lymphadenopathy. No, not another lesion is not there because sometimes you can get multiple lesions. which could be multiple solitary there is a section on that so don't talk about that that's not mentioned uh, absence, absence of, of lymph nodes what else absence of pleural effusion okay we got that what else mm. absence of one more thing atelectasis atelectasis and which is detectable on a chest x ray and ct or ct scan okay and then of course incidental findings is they are present in 0.9 to 0.2 okay now yes, how do you classify solitary pulmonary nodules please tell me again uh solid according to the bts guidelines how do you classify solitary pulmonary nodules solid uh partly solid and cystic cystic what is word cystic i've never heard of the word cystic the guidelines use what terminology cystic is uh, a ground glass opacity G -G. yeah so so actually there are two two first broad classifications one is solid and sub solid okay solid and sub solid and the sub solid is divided into part solid and pure gg pure okay is very important this is and so the again this is you can look down the reference is given okay and so the yes, previous question which i asked you is also from the reference there is a definition of there okay See, pulmonary nodule is divided, is is defined in that paper. Okay, so now we will come yes, to sir. how do you define a solid SPM. Once again, please for repetition say for learning, how do you define a solid SPM? So, uh, lesion less than three centimeter. No, no, just solid SPM. We got SPM, but what is the definition of a solid versus GGO? 
So, uh, bronchovascular marking are traversing through the yeah, leaf. Good. So, bronchovascular are not traversing. You can't see. It. Not, not, not. Tra sorry, not traversing. Yeah, so you can't see it. There may be traversing, but you can't see it on the CT scan. So this is a solid nodule. Okay. The reason for this being a solid nodule is because you can't see any bronchovascular marking, but you can see it on the surrounding lung. Okay. How do you define a part solid? Quickly. Nikhil, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, just quickly define a part solid. Come on. I'm not, they're not taking mix. This. So the lesion partly solid and and uh, so what is the other component? Ground glass opacity. Yeah, so there is no trick, Nikhil. I'm asking you a straightforward question. Sir. Yes, sir. Part solid and part ground glass, yeah. less than three centimeters. That is the definition of a subsolid. Yeah, <laughs> this is a part solid. Can you see that? There is yes. in between there is solid and surrounding there is subsolid. Okay. Define me a ground glass. Uh, the bronchovascular marking are traversing through the lesion. Okay, so focal opacity less than three <coughs> centimeters. What is the differentiation between the ground glass and the surrounding parenchyma? There has to be some difference, isn't it? So what is the differentiation? between the components of the ground glass and the parenchyma on radiology. In a, in a ground glass. Uh, Simran, you want to take it? Um, <coughs> uh, For it to be a ground glass, what is the difference between the component of the tumor and the background? It is, it is more radio opaque than the background. Good, good, very good. Who was that? Vikas, are you uh, with us? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, yes, sir. I, didn't, I didn't see you, so I thought you had not joined. So good, the opacification is more than the background. Okay. And what is one more criteria now for ground glass? Vikas, finish it. It does not obscure the bronchovascular margin. Excellent, very good. Okay, so these are the three points. Is it okay? Have you understood? See, the opacification here is more than the surrounding. Yeah? It has to be because otherwise there is nothing there. If there is no opacification, that means there is no tumor or no this thing. So ground glass is opacification is more than the background, but you can still the bronchovascular markings. Okay? So now, Nikhil, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Okay? Uh, if this guy was not a smoker and you found this lesion in the lung, Give me some etiology of this lesion of a benign solitary pulmonary nodule. What can cause benign solitary pulmonary? Actually, Nikhil, wait, I will ask Simran this question for a specific reason. So, Simran, tell me what uh, is so an etiology of a benign solid pulmonary nodule? So, uh, uh, so etiology for benign uh, solitary pulmonary nodule is congenital. Um, it can be um, congenital and acquired. So finish the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Congenital and acquired, sir. Yeah. So now congenital uh, is. Uh, sir, congenital can be uh, atriovenous uh, malformations. Good. Uh, so the, the some mucosils. Um, so. Um, Malformations so, seen uh, in what syndrome? Uh, so uh, uh, no, that's. Uh, so I, I don't know, sir. Yeah, Osler Weber and Osler Weber. Weber. So, uh, but uh, isn't Osler Weber, uh, you know, uh, multiple? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But in the lungs, you get a small okay, right, lesions right, with right. So uh, we're right, talking sir. just about the lung. Okay. Right, uh, in so then, in uh, the in the acquired. So acquired will be uh, infections. Uh, uh, they can be abscesses. Uh, the infections can be either bacterial or uh, viral. Then uh, you have that mm -hmm. uh, 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 boob, uh, the bronchiolitis. Uh, boob, that's okay, go ahead. Yeah, and then uh, so then fungal, fungal will be aspergilloma, actinomyces, actinomyces uh, 
coccidiomycosis and uh, histoplasmosis. Um, uh, so, in, uh, so th this is AVMs, this is lung abscesses, this is AVM, okay, AV malformation, yes. very classical, okay, and this is lung abscess, this is aspergilloma, okay, uh, these other inflammatories are, uh, other benigns are, I gave you the answer. So, uh, inflammatories, uh, then they can be inflammatory uh, uh, lymph nodes, then uh, granulomas, which can be tuberculosis, um, um, so sarcoidosis. Yeah, histocytomas, plasma cytomas, rheumatoids. Histocytomas, plasma cytomas, rheumatoids, SLEs. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, so there's a whole whole gamut of things. Okay. But the one thing you must remember is uh, pseudo tumors. So Blasowski syndrome. What is Blasowski syndrome? Sorry, it's a, uh, it's a um, lung folding on itself and it appears as a, a pseudo tumor. Okay, so that's right. It's an infolding of the lung. All right, okay. Sorry about the animation. This is going on. And then autoimmune, you've got that. Okay. Uh, anything else, uh, Nikhil? Anything else you can come up with? Causes of solid people? If this guy was benign, what else can be there? If he told you that he had actually gone on a trip to Australia and he just come back from Australia, what do you think could be a lesion in the lung and he had some pain in the calf? Is it infectious etiology? Uh, Australia, man, flight, flight. Yeah, pulmonary embolism and impact. Okay, it could be in uh, emboli. Embolize can cause solitary pulmonary nodules. Okay, so listen to the question of the examiner. I'm talking about Australia means a long flight, doesn't it? So you can have infarction. What else can you see? Well, uh, one thing everybody's forgotten. I've not heard anybody say that. Uh, Vikas, what else? Uh, what are the other causes of SPF? Bronchogenic cyst and Sequestered lungs, sequestered lungs. Yeah, bronchogenic cyst, sequestered lungs, but the commonest cause of a benign is PNS. It's a hematoma. Cal calcified, ah, calcified. Hematoma, thank you. Thank you. Hematoma. hematoma. I was looking for hematoma. It so come uh, if you're going the, in a systematic yes, way, the hematoma comes a little later. Yes. But sir. if you're asked clinically, the first cause is hematoma. Okay? Yes, sir. A dense, solid, calcified lesion in the lung is usually hematoma, okay? All right, and, and Vikas said bronchogenic cyst and lung sequestration. Okay, now tell me the various patterns of calcification in benign solitary pulmonary nodules. Don't uh, read my previous lecture, huh? guys. You have to come up to me and answer straight away without having my slides in front of you. Who is going to take it? Nikhil, you want to take it? Okay. So what is on, on radiology? Retic what is the... St reticular stellate. Uh, calcification. Anybody else wants to come in? Simran, you want to take this? Do you know how benign calcification is? So benign Radial. calcification will will mostly be uh, either diffuse calcification, will be central Good. calcification, uh, laminar calcification, or popcorn calcification. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Everybody happy with this? Yeah. So this is actually a question we ask you when we put up a CT scan. And we ask you, can you please define what is this calcification? So diffuse, central, laminated, and popcorn. This is a radiology question, okay, on the CT scan. All right. So this is benign, forget that. This is benign, can you see this? This is benign with the various calcifications. Can you see the type of calcification here? So different types of calcification. This is a lung infarction. What, my question to you, Nikhil, is what is the speciality? How do you identify a lung infarction on a CT scan? Give me two or three features. Which, uh... V-shape. Uh, Excellent. Wedge shape. shape. That's number one. Number two. Well, how uh, is the positioning of the wedge? 
uh, so the uh, it's a apex of the triangle is towards the uh, uh, to uh, towards the center okay. and, so, that, uh, uh -huh. and the third thing and the third what thing is the uh, uh, sir there is a obliteration of the lumen i mean uh, there is a lesion in the uh, lumen in the vessel wall so you might see a clot in the lung. clot in the pulmonary artery you may or may not see a clot in you may see this can you see the city in front of you can yes, you see sir. where my arrow is that's the clot yes sir can you see the clot yes sir so one clot two wedge shape broad here and apex here okay this again is a question i ask in the exam okay when i put up an x-ray so how do you define a lung or why do you call it a lung infarction okay so let's finish this this is the round atelic faces blesowski syndrome this is infolding of the lung, okay? Infolding of the lung, and that looks like on a CT scan, it looks like a solid pulmonary nodule. Okay, that's a benign thing, and then that's bronchogenic cyst. Okay, now Nikhil, in this guy, back to the case, okay? Are we okay so far? Everybody is understanding. It's easy. So back to this. In this guy, who's got a history of smoking, okay? Twenty pack years, twenty cigarettes, twenty pack years. What are you going to think of? What are the questions you want to ask this guy? In his smoking is so, uh, smoking is and uh, and That's the family the history. So the family Are history of sir. Uh, okay, good. What else? Uh, what are is you there thinking in, of? Some uh, a malignancy. Okay, so what type of malignancy are you thinking? A squamma. No, go broader, go broader. Not Don't go into adeno and squamous. You don't know that as yet. But broadly, how... Non-small cell. Non-small cell. Even broader. Step back one more. What is the question I'm asking you? I want a broad thing, di differential diagnosis, a broad differential diagnosis. Simran, broad differential diagnosis. Uh, sir, are you asking uh, uh, primary or secondary? Uh, primary or metastatic? Correct. Right. Absolutely right. This could be a primary lung cancer or it could be a metastatic, isn't it? Yes, sir. Both are possible in this situation. Agreed or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so now, again, I come back to my previous question. What questions will you ask this guy specifically with relation to this nodule in a 45-year-old smoker? So you told me family history, I'm happy with that. More important, what else? Specific questions in history. Can I go through now presenting is present. some few things just tell me a uh, little bit symptoms some symptoms you will ask okay yes sir other oh, system involvement you can start talking okay don't get stuck i'm yes, not sir. asking difficult questions at all these are not trick questions these are everyday questions okay not trick i promise you this is not trick just everyday questions so what symptoms will you ask for four symptoms quickly uh, sir, loss of weight, loss of appetite, mm, uh, cough, hemoptosis. Oh, cough, hemoptosis, loss of weight, good enough. I'm happy with that. Next, what other symptoms uh, do you want to ask or what other history do you want to ask? Sir, you got smoking history, you got family history. There are two more, two or three more important things I want you to ask. Simran, I just told you, we are talking about primary and secondary. And secondary. So other system so involvements. What, yeah, so what specific things can come to the lung? Dig per rectum. <coughs> come come in, Vikas. Talk, we talk, have a history of bleeding per rectum, bleeding per rectum any history of Very melina, any good. history of lumps, any history of lumps anywhere in body, any previous okay. history of treatment for any tumor, his previous history of I radiation see. also. Previous history of surgery okay. and previous history of radiation. Okay. So, so, so one now question, my question sir. is again so, to you. So, one, so one, one question, stay with sir. me. Simran, so, stay, sorry. 
sorry my question back to you is what are the common secondary metastases seen in the lung where uh, is the sorry. primary the history he said was perfect i was very happy with because it answered so now tell me the primaries that you can get sir in in males and in females uh, keep talking colon could be colon could be sir uh, gi malignancy yeah so colonic cancer GIG. first colonic cancer no, common things not colonic cancer colorectal colonic cancer. colorectal what? cancers what are they so skin malign uh, melanomas Melanomas, yeah, not that common, but yeah. What else? Uterine can be. Breast cancer. Somebody's uh, microphone is on. Just switch off. Whoever is talking in the background. Yeah, if you are answering, keep it on. If you are talking to your neighbors, just switch off your microphone. Yeah. What else? Breast cancer. Very good. What else? You uh. Okay, Simran. What else? Are you with me, Simran? Hello. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Hello? The sarcomas. Sarcomas. Very good. What else? Uh, sir, uh, he said colon. Sir, kidneys and uh, prostate and thyroid. Kidneys. Kidneys are very important. Okay. Okay, because transitional cell or renal cell can come to the lung. Okay. What else? Prostate. Okay. Agree. Prostate. Prostate sir, commonly is... goes to which organ? Uh, so uh, spine brain. and uh, brain, sir. Brain. Uh, it's not not brain to the spine to the bones. Yes, okay. uh, so good. Spine part, good. Sir. Yes, sir. What else? Uh, so thyroid, thyroid, thyroid. Thyroid. What else? Squamous cell carcinoma. What else? Squamous cell. What else? Where is the primary in the squamous cell? Esophagus. Is some figures going to the lung? Yeah, okay, possible, but um, common things, more common. This is an important question. Huh? If you get lung cancer in the exam, you must know where head the primaries are. Head and neck. Head and neck. Head and neck cancer. Head Thank you. Head, head and, and neck. neck. Oro, oropharyngeal cancer. Oropharyngeal. Yeah. So oropharyngeal ca cancers can come to the lung, cause uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah. Colonic cancers. Cause what sort of uh, metastases? Nickel. Squamous cell for oropharyngeal. Colonic is what can metastasis? Adeno. What is the histology? Uh, Adeno. Adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma. Very good. It's quite important to know that. Okay. So we have covered more or less things. The one thing that you probably forgot to mention to me, I think all of you forgot to mention to me in terms of history. uh is um, okay give me the three differential diagnosis for a primary lung cancer nikhil tell me three differential diagnosis for a primary lung cancer in this patient the if it was a nicely smooth circular nodule what would you think so uh, non small cell can okay agreed what is the other one Um, Imran, what are the other ones? He so, said non-small cell. Small cell. Uh, ah, so non-small cell. Bola to small cell is the next one, no? Small cell and and, and what is the third one? Carcinoid. 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 Yeah. So these are the three primaries. Now, in the history, you forgot to ask in terms of systemic symptoms of a small cell carcinoid. Yes. Yeah. Sir. What are the systemic symptoms of small cell or a carcinoid? uh sir in case of uh, uh carcinoid there is a flushing uh and uh diarrhea diarrhea and Most and hypertension diarrhea. yeah hypertension is a bad thing diarrhea diarrhea and flushing are the common things yeah so this is simple so... question i'm not asking you anything complicated is it complicated no simple question so primary you have to ask me tell me symptoms of all three Okay, no sponsor. That's why we are practicing because your thought process must become bang, 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 bang. On one slide, uh, I have spent so much time. This should have been finished in thirty seconds. Okay, this is this is the question and this is the answer. 
This should have been finished in 30 seconds. Yeah. We spend yes. about 10 minutes on this question, on this slide. It should never be 10 minutes. It doesn't make sense what I'm saying. Simran, did you understand what I'm saying? You should never waste so much time on, yes, on a simple question. Okay. Yes. Sir. It's a very straightforward. Nothing. I was not tricking you. I was not trying to ask you a difference. This is a straightforward slide, but you should come bang, 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 bang. The one question I have not asked you in this slide, which I will ask you now, okay, Vikas, take this, because we've spoken about metastasis to the lung, okay, secondaries to the lung. Now tell me about the reverse, common metastasis of lung cancer, common sites of metastasis of lung cancer. At, at inner brain bones. Excellent, these three, that's it. Just. If you just come out with these three, I'll be very happy. Common sites, yeah? Because when you work up a patient for lung cancer, you have to look for metastasis in these, these three sites, okay? That's the whole idea. Okay, so this is your thing. This is, uh, what is the difference between a primary lung cancer? How will you make out that in this patient, this is probably a primary lung cancer as opposed to a metastasis? Radiologically, what is the differentiation? The radiologically, uh, uh, metastasis is very clear cut. It's round, so there is okay. no surrounding so puckering. Or, Good, yeah. So there is and no surrounding surrounded puckering or anything in a metastasis. Okay, uh, in, and in primary, in primary we have uh, some uh, signs of uh, destruction of the nearby lung. So we have uh, puckered densities or other things. Okay, and one more differentiation I want you to tell me between metastasis and primary. Metastasis will not be associated with ground glass most of the time. Yeah, okay. What else? I'm thinking of something. One more. Can we say thing. cannon balls here? That's exactly the answer that in metastasis, you can have more than one. Yes, it may not be a, yeah, there can be multiple. <laughs> Whereas in usually lung cancer, there will be solid triple metastasis. Okay, so this is what I was the question I was asking you. And in metastasis, you can have more than one, more yes. than one solid. If you ever had to follow up a patient with this sort of a chest x ray, what do you, how do you follow up this patient? I mean, this is a very advanced question which will come, but I, since I showed you the x ray, I want to ask you the question. How do you follow up this chest x ray? Um, sir, uh, need to know the histology, whether it is a... Um, uh, yeah, yeah this, the question is very specific. There are John, multiple John, lesions, multiple lesions in the chest, okay? And I said, uh, you have to follow this up by CT scan, okay? Uh, whether, uh, so it is a, How do you follow up this with a CT scan? Low dose CT scan, 125 slice. Yeah, but how do you follow? What are you, which are you looking at? Is so the germ cell tumor, residual component? No, no, I'm not talking about histology. I'm talking about actual, in real life. If you've got somebody with 20 metastases in the lung, and I said, follow this up on a CT scan and tell me that it is becoming worse or better. How will you? So which size and, will you size and number. Size and number. Size, the largest size. The answer to this, it is there in the guidelines. That you, when you are following it up, you always look at the largest size and any new number, of course. But important answer is you follow it. The largest size is considered as a single lesion. And that is the one, the guideline, if you want to apply the guideline, you apply it on the basis of the largest size. You know the guideline is less than six, eight, okay, up to three. So in that guideline, how do you apply? It is the largest size that you apply the guideline. Okay, I'll come to this in a minute. All right, is it making sense? Yes. Yes, sir. Hello, are you getting? Yes, yes sir. Is it getting? Yes, yes sir. Too, no, sir. Too irrelevant. If it's too irrelevant, I'm quite happy to stop. Okay. Okay. I can no, do sir. other things. Okay. All right. So tell me some clinical features in the history that you look for. Again, I'm coming back to that. Again, from the guidelines. So tell me a few things. Firstly, the patient could be asymptomatic. 
We spoke about smoking, we spoke about hemoptysis, we spoke about constitutional symptoms, okay? And then uh, drug history is also important in these. AIDS is important because infective pathology is more common in AIDS. Travel history, I mentioned to you earlier, the guy came from Australia and occupational exposure is important, okay? And we spoke about extrapulmonary malignancy. Uh, I think uh, Vikas spoke about previous uh, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. And we also spoke about paraneoplastic syndrome. Okay. So all the discussion that we did so far for the last 30, 40 minutes is actually from the guidelines. Okay. This is mentioned there. Okay. I'm not making it up. This is from the SPN guidelines. Yeah. So please take these slides seriously. If you had read the guidelines properly, you would have had no hesitation in answering my question in the order that I asked you. So asymptomatic smoking, hemoptysis, constitutional symptoms, these are the words I want to hear. And in one minute, the whole question will be finished. Drug history, age status, travel history, occupational exposure, extrapulmonary malignancy, previous mediastinal radiotherapy, and paraneoplastic symptoms. If you had answered me in one line, all of these, we would have not wasted 30 minutes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. when you have, so please practice this. The point I'm making is please practice this. Okay, these answers are there. It is from the guideline, not, I have not made it up. Okay, so what are risk factors for SPN turning out to be cancer? Uh, let Simran take this, different now. Simran, what are the so, risk factors uh, for an SPN turning out to be cancer? So, sir, the risk factors for uh, um, the uh, the so nodule turning out to be cancer, so you have to assess this on the basis of uh, predictor models for malignancy. So, okay. that includes uh, age, uh, uh, smoking, um, uh, previous cancer history, uh, 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 so size of the lesion. Um, yeah. Uh, so families. size of lesion, uh, family history, family history, yes. And in disease and history, COPD, yes. Okay. So tell me the predictor models of malignancy. You use the word predictor models. Tell me two or three names of predictor. Sir, uh, uh, wait, so wait, the... wait, Simran, wait, Simran, wait, Simran, wait, Simran, wait. Uh, Nikhil. Uh, no, no, Vikas, wait one minute. I know you know okay. this. So, no, no, first thing we should tell is any interval change whenever CRS SPN. Uh, but there yeah. is no previous images available for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for this patient, no, but always look for interval change and previous x -ray. So any x-ray, the first answer is, I want to see the previous x-ray. Okay. Uh, Nikhil, tell me what are the three tools used for assessing risk factor for malignancy? Each... Name, just give me the name. No, the tools available. Simran said you use something called as predictor models of malignancy. Models. So, which are the three models that you know of? Uh, like to Just pass. give me the name. Like okay, Simran, now you come in and you tell me three models that you know. So, Mayo-Brock model, uh, so Mayo -Brock model uh, then uh, the, the Veterans, uh, Veterans Affair model and the... Uh, model. So, please know this name. Yes, so whenever we talk about what is this of this being a malignant solitary pulmonary nodule, I will ask you what are the predictor models of malignancy. Yeah. So now uh, Vikas, you know this very well. Uh, tell me about the veteran affair model. A little bit about the veteran affair. You know that. How is it rated? What's the odds ratio? No, sir. Uh, Brox is done on CT scan and Harder is done, done on PET CT. They, that is the only, only thing I know. That's All right. So tell me about the veterans. <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Uh, the, uh, Simran, do you want to take this? <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> that is the answer for you, okay? Sir, uh, this is the model. Yes, we're this supposed is... to know this, sir. I mean, uh, okay. the number, if everything is supposed to know. If sir. you want to get nine out of nine, then just know this. It's good to know this. <laughs> <laughs> See, all the questions that I'm asking you uh, are actually directly from the guideline. So you must know the guideline inside out. Yeah. So just know this. It is in front of you. It's not difficult at all. 
if they give you a marking and if it's a current of past smoking you, you give 7.9 patient right. age gets 2.2 for every 10 year increment the nodule per millimeter increase is 1.1 and time since quitting smoking is also important okay all right the other one is for uh, mayo model it's actually the nodule size greater than four millimeters and these are the numbers if you know it good if you don't know it that's fine okay i won't fail you for that okay next but know that there are these three models and it's not a very difficult thing to know just look at the odds ratio they're very easy okay so now your your patient you've asked the history i'm quite happy um, what are you going to look for specifically now don't give me all details but just important things that you look for when you're doing an examination for a patient with SPN, mm -hmm. including benign and malignant. Okay, so some specific things in examination. Nikhil, tell me what are specific things you look for in examination? So the jaundice, lymphadenopathy. Good. Pallor. And what does it represent also? Tell me. Uh, so, so when you say jaundice, why, why do you say jaundice? Things like uh, to, to rule out the hepatic metastasis. Okay, good. Lymphadenopathy for lymphatic metastasis. Okay. Uh, palate for anemia of chronic disease. Okay. I mean, pregnancy. Mm. Uh, decrease air intake. Signs of pleural effusion. Okay. If mm. this patient had clubbing on the fingers, what would you think? Uh, it's a pulmonary osteoarthropathy. So, what are the things that can happen? If there are clubbing in the hands, what can happen? Pulmonary osteoarthropathy is a good word. I like that. And I would actually go on to the next question. But because we are teaching, uh, I, I want some details of pulmonary osteoarthropathy. Okay, Simran, tell me, what is pulmonary osteoarthropathy? And seen in what two or three conditions? Give me two or three conditions. Sir, uh, clubbing due to uh, pulmonary causes. And uh, yeah. uh, what are they? Uh, so, it's, uh, seen in lung. Uh, so what is uh, what is pulmonary osteoarthropathy? No, that I understood. Now tell me what are the causes? Just two or three causes. So seen in, so seen in lung cancer, bronchiectasis, and uh, uh, extensive uh, AVMs. Yeah, good. That's very good. Well done. I'm very happy with that. Okay, excellent, uh, sir Simran. You know the answer very well. Uh, Vikas, come in and tell me cyanosis seen in what cases? SPN patient blood. with clinical symptoms showing cyanosis, some differential diagnosis. Any pul uh, pulmonary AV malformations? Okay, very we'll, good. Pulmonary AV. We'll yeah. What else? And what else you will see besides cyanosis on the skin? Osler Weber. We will see Osler Weber sy syndromes. So what will you so see? Tell spider, me spider, 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 and spider, 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 and particularly on the lips, what will you see? Uh, Telangiectasis. Very good. Telangiectasis. Pigmentation. The word is telangiectasis. Okay? Telangiectasis. Good. So that's seen in uh, uh, pulmonary avians and in most of them. In, in patients with heart murmur and drug abusers, you might get tricuspid regurgitation and you usually get solitary pulmonary nodules in drug abusers. Okay? That could be either because of emboli formation or it could be because of the drug injections that they are doing might form some uh, uh, solitary lesions in the lung because they are injecting themselves. Okay, drug abuse is important. What else will you see in general examination in these patients? You may see. Tell me a few more things, Nikhil. Signs of paraneoplastic syndrome, flushing. Okay, yeah, good skin. Good. I like that. I like that. What is the si other signs of malignancy? He's losing weight. Uh, cachexia. 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 Yeah, you'll see cachexia. It could be secondary malignancy. No? Metastasis. Secondary metastasis, you might see uh, signs of uh, weight loss and cachexia. Okay. Uh, what else you could see? You could see epistaxis or skin lesions in vasculitis. One more thing I want you to tell me that you can see in a general examination. Edema. 
the science of malnutrition. Yeah, hypoprotein. Yeah, okay. Well, something else more important, which will tell you that this is a metastasis of a previous Lump. malignancy. Scar Lump in the body. body. Lump in the body. Sorry, sorry. One minute. One by one. Uh, Vikas, you said something. Just say it. What you said. Lump anywhere in the body. One. Um, Simran, you said something very important. The Say, scars of previous previous surgery. Excellent. Scars of previous <laughs> surgery. And Nikhil, one more thing. You say something else. So I said only scar only. So scar of previous surgery, I agree. But signs of previous radiotherapy. Okay. You, you can see some discoloration of the skin and things like that. So mediastinal radiotherapy, you might see some signs of previous radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, so simple thing in an SPL, what you look for in an examination? It's a very easy question, but uh, you know, you really need to speed up see. with your answers. Okay. Is that okay? Is it making yes, sense? Sir. The slide is making sense or no? Okay. So we'll yes, just sir. see a few examples, see if these things can happen. Then all of this that I told you, cyanosis, kidney, why, telangiectasia, pulmonary uh, murmur, with pulmonary AVM, secondary cachexia of malignancy. And most important, this is the one I was looking for. Okay, now somebody, uh, no, not somebody, uh, Simran, uh, this guy whom Nikhil saw in the clinic, you were examining and you saw this. Please explain this to me. Um, so this is a sign of, uh, this is a previous car of uh, expiratory laparotomy. Uh, extending from right subcostal uh, and midline. So what do you think has been done? Or what do you uh, give me so differential probably, diagnosis for what so has happened to this guy? Probably a colonic uh, colonic resection. With? Uh, with liver metastasis, uh, metastat yeah, metastatic. Absolutely. This 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 one is this horizontal scar. You will not do for a colonic surgery, will you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what is one more thing you forgot? You didn't, you're not looking carefully at this slide. And one thing you forgot, you can't see actually. You missed it, I think. So there's a, uh, so uh, financial incision as well? Maybe, you're right. There could be a financial, but what is this? Uh, so, um, um, uh, previous radiotherapy. Oh, stoma site. Stoma site, site of stoma. Stoma site, yeah. Yeah, of course. Colonic surgery, colonic surgery. Right. Be yes, sir. Yeah? So <laughs> this is this is very important slide. <laughs> so this guy <laughs> came to you and you did examination. This I don't know, he might have had something in the past, but this is related to this. Yeah. And this is not just a straightforward colonic resection because he's also got a large subcostal incision, which is usually done for liver resections and things like that, yeah? So he's probably had a colonic malignancy with yes, some resection of liver with metastasis probably, and more importantly, he had a colostomy. This is very important, colostomy. That's a classical site of colostomy, yeah? Okay, thank you. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, all right, okay. So now, what are the technical concerns? So the next question I told you in the BTS guidelines, so technical considerations, okay? So chest x-ray, of course, you will do. So this is a standard. Can you see the lesion there? Yes, if sir. somebody shows you a normal chest x-ray, my suggestion to you would be look hard. It is highly unlikely in an examination that I will show you a normal chest x-ray. The one thing that you have to look for when the chest x-ray looks normal is for a solitary pulmonary nodule, okay? Take my advice, look hard, look in the periphery and it's sometimes you might actually miss it because of the overlying uh, rib shadow. So if you don't see anything and you, it looks like a normal chest x-ray, what, what will you do? What will you tell the examiner? Nikhil, I would like to see some more image. What image do you want to see? CT scan. C CT scan. Right. Previous x-ray. Previous x-ray agreed. Well done. And the second thing you want to see? 
lateral x-ray uh, lateral view. view yes because in an ap or a pa if it is lying on the rib shadow the rib is obscuring your lesion and the lateral will show you the lesion more clear or if it is behind the heart then the lateral will show you the lesion more clearly does it does that make sense so in an exam if ever you're shown an x-ray which looks normal relatively normal just step back a little bit because nobody will put up a normal chest x-ray in an exam so pink solitary pulmonary nodule two answers you have to give sir can i see a previous x-ray and number two more important can you show me the lateral view of this chest x-ray where where else is a lateral view important in a thoracic surgery exam uh, mid external tumor mid external tumor where else good where else oh uh, where uh, else would a lateral uh, chest x-ray add value to your analysis anybody else can take it somebody else take it vikas one is mediastinal tumor i agree number two uh, areas of uh, shade that means retro cardiac areas uh, yes, sir. sorry yeah yeah sir. come come i heard something good i, I heard a lady's voice saumya yes sir saumya yes, tell me what did you say some esophageal uh lesions cyst commonest esophageal lesion that a chest x-ray lateral chest x-ray will differentiate for you uh, cystic uh, lesions in mid okay. i'm not able to the name no no it's okay it's okay just think you are in in your clinical practice what is the commonest thing you see in children In children, the commonest thing when you do ask for a lateral chest X-ray, duplication cyst is more common. Than that. It's a foreign body. Ah, thank foreign you very body. much. Well done, foreign body. Why is a chest X-ray important in a foreign body? Lateral chest uh, X-ray important in a foreign body. Uh, sir, to differentiate between whether it is lying in the uh, trachea or uh, esophageal wall. Thank you very much. Okay, so not a difficult question. but if it is a question i can ask you in the exam okay so commonest thing is a foreign body and you do a lateral chest x ray because you want to see if it is in the trachea or in the esophagus okay so this is what happens in the exam you know the answer it's not that you don't know this answer but moment i put you on the spot i mean somia sees foreign bodies morning evening night i'm sure but the moment you put a put somebody on the spot you forget you can't repeat so try to step back and relax and think common things okay well done okay this is multiple nodules okay so this guy's chest x ray showed a lesion in the right upper lobe so what are you going to do next uh, maybe he was a non smoker so what would you do next sir uh, not thinking uh, malignancy so much but what is the next step of investigation sir ct scan chest ct scan what CT scan. CT scan. with with contrast enhance with abdominal image in a solitary pulmonary nodule what if you are not thinking like uh so then uh, a con contrast enhance ct scan anybody else wants to take it there is a, a, a hr city with city volumetry why why contrast enhance or why hr city uh, sir for a lung lesion um, the hr city is uh, hr city will give a better idea so why you asked for a contrast enhance uh, sir uh, to look for is there any uh, mid external node involvement along with Well, actually, HRCT is the commonest thing that you look for. Yes, okay? sir. On which so in the, in the guidelines, if it is a simple lesion in the lung which you don't know what it is, then the next investigation is HRCT with multi-plane reconstruction and volumetry. Okay, is that yes, clear? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So don't jump into CECT. What is the problem with the CECT? 
so you need a, uh, a renal clear uh, creatinine clearance and later on uh, the patient may have a dye allergy good that's the answer well done very simple easy question easy answer okay so hrc it is what to do in an spn in a in a health checkup in an executive health checkup would you actually put him through cct no yeah, you just do a hrct with multiple and reconstruction and then have a look and this is actually from the guideline so now if it's benign you reassure and discharge happy with that and then you use the three models of risk prediction and then you decide whether it's low intermediate or high risk of malignancy okay. what about bronchoscopy sir uh, not at the moment, not in an SPN straight away. Bronchoscopy is part of the investigation routine if you are suspecting infective pathology. So bronchoscopy is there, but when you are suspecting infective pathology, not when you are suspecting a benign or a malignant mass. Okay? So it will come up, it will come up there. So now for a CT scan, if you did a CT scan, Nikhil, Yes, sir. What do you want? And this is again from the guidelines. So what are the specifications that you need? What is the quality of a CT scan that you need to work up a solitary pulmonary nodules? Criteria. What are the criteria? So this 64 slice and CT volumetry. Tell me criteria. What thickness? What thickness will you do? 1.25. So I showed you 1.25 millimeters. Okay. That's the basic, okay? If it is a follow up CT scan, then what is the criteria? Mm, no. I mean, you're doing a follow up at three months, four months, just to see whether the size has increased or decreased. What is the criteria? Uh, the uh, CT, you, uh, ideally, the, from the same machine, it should be followed. Yeah, but what about dosage? Lower dose. Low dose CT scan with 125 millimeters. Okay. So a standard CT criteria is at least 1.25 millimeter thickness. And a so, follow-up CT should always be low dose with 1.1. Yes, Simran? So uh, very silly question, sir. So what is the difference between low dose CT scan and uh, HRCT? I mean, it's a very silly question. Low dose is a very low dose CT, as in the volume of the uh, projection is much lower. Okay, much, much lower. HRCT is intermediate and CCT is high dose. Okay, so, so there are various, I don't remember the numbers of the three. There are actually numbers how much volume you do in an HR, low right, dose, right, right. how much volume you do in an HR, and how much you do in a CCT. I don't remember the numbers, so I don't want to give you right. So, HRCT is not. HRCT is not low dose CT scan. Sir. It's not low dose. No, no, no. HRCT is intermediate grade CT. Okay, okay. okay. HRCT right. is high resolution. You know, so you do see a lot of, you do take a lot of pictures, and there are right. multiple slices, and it's usually 0.5 mm thickness. HRCT. And the so low okay. dose CT is how how thick, sir? 1.25 minimum requirement. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's what I just showed you. Okay. So what are the three things that you do in a CT scan in from the guidelines. Nikhil Bolona, yaar, come on, finish this. This is a standard question, yaar. In an SPN, this is a standard question. What are the other two or three things you need? Calcification? No, 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 no. In terms of CT requirements. About the machine, what are the things you're going to... You should know this. This is there in the exam. So you look for maximum intensity projection. You look for volume rendering, and if volume rendering is not possible, then you look for diameter. This is the answer. Okay, please, you must know that. So this, these are the technicalities of the CT. It's, look at the headlines. What is the CT scan requirement? So these are the technicalities of the CT. So they do what is called as a maximum intensity projection (MIP). They do what is called as volume rendering. So actually, size is not as good an indicator of increase or of activity. What you really need to look in a follow-up scan is the volume, volume, the most sensitive indicator of change in the uh, quality of a solitary pulmonary nodule is volume, not size. Because if you're talking about ground glass opacity 
and it is five millimeters in size, you will never be able to tell whether the five millimeter has become six millimeter. But what you will be able to tell is the volume, which was very scanty in a ground glass has changed and increased in volume. The density of that opacity has increased. Did, did you understand this concept or no, what I just said? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yeah, so it, it, these are just standard questions. In an exam, when you follow up a patient, what do you look for? So you look for volume. It's the volume. And volume becomes very important when you're dealing with lesions which are less than eight millimeters. Anything less than eight millimeters is very difficult to know an increase in size. But what you can pick up is an increase in volume. Okay? All right. So this is it. Again, this is from the guideline. Nothing. I'm not asking you anything outside of this. Okay. Chalo. Next question. Radiology. What are you looking for in radiology? Nikhil, your patient is there. You've got the CT done. What do you, what do you want to look for in the CT? So, calcification. Up and bolo now. Quickly. So On its size. What size. Are you uh, for? Surface. Margin. Yeah. Mm. Shape. Shape. Okay. Size. Shape. Good. What else you're looking for? So calcification. Okay. What else? Uh, any other lesions? You just said something before. Borders. Margins. Irregular. Margins. Margins. Yeah. Okay. What else? These are the terminologies you have to use. Okay. What else? Calcification you said. So the terminology is radio density. Radio density. Okay. That's the word you have to use. And then what else you look for it? What is H? Hounsfield units. What is that called as? Uh, so the density. Yeah. So CT density. Okay. CT so you look density. for Hounsfield unit density. So this is very standard. Okay. Uh, what else you look for? <clears throat> if you have done a CECT, what else you look for? So the mediastinal nodes. And in Nairi Baba, nodule. Nodule. What do you look for in the nodule? In a contrast. So, Media spinal, I agree, but what else? In the nodule, what do you look for? So vascularity. Uh, more important. It's an indicator of malignancy. Calcium. What what are you looking for? Calcium, yeah. What else? Calcium. No, in a contrast and on CT, what do you look for in a in the nodule? Limit enhancement. So, so contrast enhancement, sir. Enhancement. Thank you. Contrast enhancement. Contrast enhancement. Well done. Yeah. Contrast enhancement. Because ABMs will enhance dramatically, yeah, as compared to a malignancy. You agree or no? ABM will show yes, up. What, are, what else yeah. do you look for? Is it getting cumbersome, these questions, or are you guys okay? Okay, sir. It's good, sir. Okay, sir. What else will you look for in the X-ray? I'm, I'm really scratching the basics. I want this to be clear with everybody. Or okay, contrast enhancement, but particularly for contrast enhancement, what will you look for? Center or periphery? This so is the central enhancement. No, remember. So peripheral, so peripheral. So peripheral. Peripheral. Always so, uh, the peripheral enhancement is an indicator peripheral. of activity. In adenocarcinoma, sir, it is uh, more important in adenocarcinoma. In an adenocarcinoma, you will get a rim enhancement around the lesion okay and that's not a good sign okay and then you said calcification okay i'm going to repeat this slide okay please i need everybody to please answer this slide for me because this is bang bang okay in an exam if i ask you this question just just you know like a parrot tell it out size, size. Okay. margins margin. radio density, density. ct density, CT density. Contrast enhancement, rim enhancement, and calcification. Okay? It also comes in the MCQ. By the way, I've read an MCQ where this was there. Okay? And again, this is from the BTS guideline. So I'm not making it up. All right? So this is the corona radiator that you see. This is a rim enhancement. Can you see the rim enhancement? So cystic lucency in the middle and rim enhancement in there. This is classical adenocarcinomas can show that. Uh, sometimes you might see air bronchogram through the density. So the shapes can be different sizes and shapes can give you a clue. What are the types of shapes that you can see? If you have a unusual shape, 
What do you look for? At the vertical versus transverse diameter. So of that. What what is the number for? What is the ratio of vertical versus transverse? Which more than tell you two, this is more benign than, and this is malignant. More than two is malignant. It's 3D ratio, it's called as 3D ratio. More than 1.78 is usually benign. And you actually look for the maximum uh, maximum transverse diameter versus the maximum vertical diameter. So well done, Vikas. Okay. This is again a slide of contrast enhancement. How do you look for contrast enhancement? Uh, in the arterial phase. Ar arterial phase, arterial venous phase, phase or what else? No, no, no. What venous else? How phase. many scans? How many scans do you do to look for contrast? Do you do just one go and then quickly go through? Three. Or do you do something more? Three, three. It's four scans at one minute interval. Okay. So what is benign and what is malignant in a contrast enhancement? Anybody knows? So if it's less than 15 HU, it's usually benign. Okay? If it's more than 15 HU in contrast enhancement, then you're talking malignancy because it means that the blood supply to that nodule has increased. That is the significance of this. Okay? All right. I'm giving you the questions and I'm also giving you the answers. Okay, so this is a solid nodule, this is a part solid, this is solid plus GTO, and this is GTO. Everybody happy with this? Yes, sir. Okay, we spoke about GTO and we said what it is. Okay, let me not go into it more. Okay, so how do you classify adenocarcinomas in GTOs? I want, this is, this is a definite question in the MCQ. Uh, what is the new classification of adenocarcinomas? Uh, in GTOs, you must know this. This is important. The next slide. Uh, Vikas, do you know this? It's a histological classification of GGOs. Histological classification of GGOs. What is it? Anybody knows or no? Okay, this is the classification. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is the new one. This is the most hot topic. Okay, so you must uh, know these words: atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, adenocarcinoma in situ, minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, and invasive adenocarcinoma. If ever I put up a CT like this in the exam, uh, this one, rest assured, I will ask you: What is the classification of GTOs? Yeah, what is the histological classification of GTOs or histological classification of adenocarcinomas in these tumors? And the answer to that is this one. Sorry. Everybody with me or not with me? Is it getting too much? No, sir. I'm afraid these are all stuff that you need to know in a SPM. Okay, this is part of the discussion. This is the latest classification. The first two are pre malignant and the last two are invasive. Okay, and uh, in a CT, this is the correlation. So just take a snapshot of the, of the screen or look up in my lecture. It has been mentioned in my lecture. Okay, what is the role of PET scan in an SPM? Nikhil. Nikhil. Yes, sir. In your patient, will you do a PET scan? Uh, yes, sir, because he has a history of smoking. I'll do a PET scan to see if uh, is there any another lesion. Okay, so good. I like that. So one is to look for metastases. What else? And. Uh, if I take a biopsy before, it will obscure the PET findings. No, no. Why are you doing a PET scan? So that's what we are asking you. I uh, said so to, uh, to, if there is a metastatic disease. Will you uh, do PET scan in all patients with uh, SPN? 
No, no, sir. So those who are high in risk. which patients of SPN would you do a PET scan? That's my question. Those who are in high risk of uh, good. So one is high risk of malignancy. Second. Uh, second, the patient who are on follow up and having increase in the uh, size of the nodule. Okay. Good. Third. What size will you traditionally do a PET scan? More than eight centimeter. Sorry, more than eight. More than one centimeter. One centimeter. Than, is one, one centimeter. Scan. The current scanners are even better. They can look for the smaller ones. But usually, if the lesion is more than one centimeter, and it is an, there's indication for doing a PET scan. Agree? Okay. So not usually for smaller lesions, but it's useful for disseminated disease and metastasis. More importantly, also, PET scan might identify a primary elsewhere and show you that this is a metastasis. Mm, metastasis. You understood that in an SPN. So that's the other answer you have to give. Uh, in uh, squamous cell, usually there is high uptake. In adenocarcinoma, the problem with scan is almost 20% can be false negative. They do not light up on a PET scan. Okay. So remember these numbers which I'm telling you. This is this. I've just bought all the important facts and put it onto the slide about PET scan. The problem with PET scan is the advantage of PET scan is if it's a positive PET scan and you do a biopsy, there is no false positives. Okay. If it is positive, it is positive. Okay, that's the advantage of a PET scan. What is the disadvantage of a PET scan? So, um, infectious diseases may lighten up. Okay, that's one. And what else? I just told you adenocarcinoma. So, what is the disadvantage of PET scan? Sir, adenocarcinoma in C2, which can be observed. Oh, even a large adenocarcinoma. What is the disadvantage of PET scan? False negative. Yeah, so a negative PET scan does not exclude the disease. Okay, that's very important. A negative PET scan does not exclude disease. So you may have to investigate further. Because 20% of cancers do not light up on a PET scan. Yeah, so this is a problem. It's not a clear cut answer for these things. But anybody with a high risk of malignancy, is very important. Uh, so yeah, go on Vikas. Who was that Vikas or something? Problem with problem. PET scan. Uh, yeah, yes. Sir. Problem with PET scan is both false positive and false negative. False positives we get in infectious, rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoidosis. Absolutely. And right. false negatives we get in very small nodules. There's problem of misregistration in lesions which are near the base of the lung because I'll, of I'll, volume. And then false negative in adenocarcinoma okay. carcinoids. So now my question to you is where do you get false positive PET scans or actually let me, well, ask, the positive PET let me ask the question again what is the physiological uptake in a PET scan that's my question areas of physiological Two point in a PET scan so the heart okay good. Uh, brain brain heart Very kidneys good. brain heart kidneys uh, bladders uh, yes. these places will have higher Absolutely. Uh, so don't mistake these for, don't mistake these for metastasis. Okay. So brain is not good on PET scan. That's why we recommend MRI brain rather than a PET scan to look at brain. Okay. Heart is no good for on a PET scan. That is why we do MRI heart to look at any myocardial lesions and things like that. Uh, kidneys. Uh, PET scan is not so good because the dye is excreted in the kidneys. Okay, so if you do a follow-up study of a PET scan, you will always find increased uptake in the uh, renal calysis. And the last but not the least is the bladder. There is a huge density of uh, the dye in the in the uh, bladder. So these are the areas where you do not uh, uh, look for. Uh, Look for metastasis on a PET scan. So what about question, the liver? Sir? Sorry? The sorry, liver what about the... No, liver is sensitive for a PET scan. You may get a little bit blush in the liver, but liver is quite sensitive. If lesions in the liver, you do use PET scans. Okay? So now my question is in a PET scan, how define an absent PET 
a positive fat or a highly positive fat. So faintly positive, positive and highly positive. What is the definition? On a on a we have to compare it with the background. Excellent. Very good answer. We have to compare it, with, have to the compare it with the background. So what are the four stages? How do you identify it? Faint uptake. Okay. So no first, up, the same, same as background, background is not. Okay. Second thing, how faint is what? You compare it with what? When you say faint or you say SUV 228, what do you mean by that? What are you comparing it to? The uptake of the background and uh, the tumor. More so importantly, the standard background may not have any uptake. So compared to the media stadium. Excellent. So when it's a Pardon? faint background, you look at the mediastinal blood pool. Anything that is less than yes. or equal to a mediastinal blood pool is called as faint uptake. Okay. What is moderate uptake in a PET scan? Which is more than mediastinal blood pool. Just okay. It's more than mediastinal blood pool. And then intense is very much more than a mediastinal blood pool. Okay. Surprising how people don't know the answer to this question. It's a very simple question. But if I ask you, how do you know what is it? Nobody knows the answer to this question. So this is an important question in the MCQ, okay? Not in the MCQ, in the VIVAS. I won't ask you this on a, on, a, on a clinical patient, but when I do a VIVA and I put up a PET scan, I'll tell you, say, uh, this is faint uptake. I'll say, what do you mean by faint uptake? So most of the people say, sir, SUV value. But how do you calculate the SUV value? It's calculated in comparison to the mediastinal blood pool. Okay, and that's how you know that it is faint or moderate or things like that, okay? So this is an intense uptake in a PET scan. Can you see this? So it's significantly more. This is a mediastinal blood pool. Can you see that? In the mediastinal, there is a little bit of halo always with the cardiac and the other things. So this is much more than that. So that is what is a intense uptake. Here, if you look carefully, it's faint uptake, okay? Look at this, compare this to this. This is the media stylum, this is the blood pool. It's more or less same or less than that. But there is some activity, there's no zero activity. Can you see that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, what is the significance of false negative PET scans? Is that adenocarcinomas? 30%, 20 percent of adenocarcinomas can be false negative. Okay, thank you very much. Well done. You still got the patient in your office. What are the blood tests? Significant blood tests in this patient. I am sorry, case presentations are not easy with me because I am very specific. Come on, tell me what are the blood tests and what what are you looking for? Simple question, huh? This is again, this is from the guidelines. I have not made it up. BTS guidelines. Say so hemoglobin. Okay, good. Well done. Anemia, monocytosis, mm -hmm. and tuberculosis. What else? Bolo beta. Blood um, test, simple blood test. What are you looking for? Three, uh, LFT, LFT, LFT. WBC count. No, no, LFT, first LFT. CBC. Yeah, CBC mm -hmm. first. So CBC. one is HB. Next, what are you looking for? W white cell count. Yeah, white cell count, which will suggest that there is infection. HB. Good. What else? What else suggests an infection? Or inflammation? What suggests inflammation? Oh, I will get a heart attack, man, if you take so long to answer this. Yes, sir. I neutrophil count, nahi re, baba. Tuberculosis, what do you do? ESR, CRP. Yes, sir. Okay, ESR and CRP. No, yes, sir. not difficult, man. Okay, what else are you going to look for? Granulomatosis or rheumatoid nodules. What do you look for? RA factor. Anka. Okay. Anka. Anti nuclear antibodies. Yeah. You look for Anka, no? You send Anka. It's a routine thing, man. What else? So, others are uh, with relation to the uh, carcinoids and things like that. So, you can, you, you can look for hypokalemic alkalosis or you can look for hypercalcemia and metastatic bone disease. Okay. Remember these, these are important points. Okay. This is straight, straight from the guideline. This is what you have to look for 
in an SPN. What else? What are the other important markers in blood? Tumor markers. Vikas, bolo yaar. Anything else? LDH? Sir, may I take that, sir? Yeah, yeah, please, Simran, whoever knows. We do, uh, we do ACTH. ACTH, urinary, uh, uh, malic acid, purulot carcinoid. Okay. What else? Uh, Simran, take it. Sir, uh, LDH will be raised in lymphomas. Um, then, uh, 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 for prostate, we'll see uh, PSA. For okay, uh, bowel... Bowel malignancies, we'll see uh, choreo embryonic uh, carcinogen. CA. Good. CA. And then for seminomas, uh, we'll see uh, beta HCGs. Excellent. Uh, so that is the answer for this question. For, okay. So if you've got solitary pulmonary so nodule, these are the blood tests. So LDH is lymphoma. If it's an aspergilloma, you look for the precipitin of aspergillus. You look for IgG, IgM for fungal infections. Okay. You look for ACE. If it's a sarcoidosis, you look for ACE. Uh, tumor markers, you just said PSA, CA, beta, HCG. Yeah. Uh, but they are, of course, not very sensitive. But this is for the BTS guidelines. The level of thing is uh, D because uh, these are not very sensitive for telling you what is the diagnosis. But you must know this. This is very basic stuff, man. Nothing difficult. Are you, do you agree or no? Is it simple or is it very difficult? Okay. So we'll go through this slide again now. I'm sorry, but we have to. Now, Nikhil, please tell me markers in blood tests yeah. for a solitary pulmonary nodule. Uh, sir, anemia, uh, CRP, uh, ESR, uh, ANCA, then... Uh, please, uh, you may know, may not know. It's okay. Hypokalemic alkalosis, hypercalcemia, ALP. What else? ALP. Uh, and, uh, Marker for other uh, marker for other malignancies like uh, LDH in lymphoma, alpha fetoprotein in beta HCG and alpha fetoprotein in um, seminoma, uh, serum precipitin for uh, of asper for aspergilloma, IgG IgM for histoplasmosis, ocardiomycosis. Uh, that's fine. That's fine, Nikhil. That's fine. Okay. Good. Thank you. Ah. This patient has not even left your uh, office as yet, and we're still struggling one hour and 20 minutes later. Okay, so what are the tools for diagnosis in, in, the, in your patient? Tissue diagnosis. How will you get tissue diagnosis in your patient? Uh, I just want to stop for a second. Uh, is it getting too frustrating for you guys? Hello? No, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. The others, uh, do we still have people or everybody is left? Okay, no, sir. The, the people are increasing, sir. Okay, good, good, good. So we are still, we must be doing something right then. Okay, tell me, how do you do tissue diagnosis? I'm sorry, I don't ask vague questions. I will always ask very specific, pointed questions. Bolo uh, sir, but, um, how do you do CT guided image. Well done. CT. Well done. Anything before Better that? Better image guided, yes. Image guided. But what, what do you want sputum, to answer? Look? Sputum. Infective? Yeah, sputum. sputum very good. Infective. Infective. So sputum cytology or sputum culture. Okay. Then uh, somebody or said bronchoscopic biopsy. Fluid. I think Salman said bronchoscopic biopsy. Well done. I'm quite happy with that. How else will you get uh, biopsies? If it's a central tumor, you can do a bron uh, bronchoscopic biopsy. How else will you get uh, tissue diagnosis? What else can you do? Image guided biopsy, ideal ultrasound or city guided. Uh, city guided, image guided, I agree with you. What else? Before that? Uh, sir, some more, some more different types. In a peripheral nodule, you can get a city guided biopsy. Uh, Central. Uh, so brushing. Brushing. Okay, good. What else? What else? Come on, guys. This is simple. More central biopsy, more central lesion. How do you do a biopsy? When so I give EBUS. you the answer, you'll kick your EBUS, thank you. EBUS. EBUS, EBUS. 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 EBUS and EUS, yeah? Yes. <laughs> so, 
for central t1 you do an e bus for yemen also depending on the location and yemen also good yemen yeah, if you don't tell me e bus i can't expect you to tell me yemen okay so <laughs> e bus and us is first and then you can add e a m n to it i'm happy with that i don't mind okay what else you said ct guide is peripheral okay what else how else can you get diagnosis issue diagnosis Simple question, man. So difficult. So surgical, answer. surgical biopsy, sir. Thank you. Well done. God bless you. Surgical biopsy. Right. Right. And open. Okay. What else? How do you do in in a surgery? How do you get biopsy? So the wedge. Wedge one. Okay. One is wedge. What else? Okay. Rapid onsite ROAC. For rapid onsite. Yeah, but that is cytology. That is for EPAS. But in a surgical biopsy, you don't do rows. Frozen section. Frozen section. Yeah, yeah. But how do you take the biopsy, man? Give me an answer. So, simple so question. Punch, punch biopsy and uh, true cut biopsy. Thank and, uh, you. Punch biopsy, true cut biopsy, and wedge biopsy. Yes, God yes, bless you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Ah, I am so relieved that you could answer it. <laughs> It's just basic okay. questions. <laughs> okay, this is not a difficult question, man. Don't make me beat my head against the wall. Okay. All right. What are the problems, Nikhil? Now, don't disappoint me. What are the problems of CT guided biopsy? Um. So the compl uh, complication pneumothorax. Good. Thank you. What else? And bleeding. Okay. And hemoptysis. Right. Uh, what is the diagnostic accuracy? Mm. Literature guidelines. Exactly. Anybody else? Diagnostic accuracy. Give me a number. Some number. <laughs> Nin it is sixty to eighty percent, and only ninety six percent. Ninety six percent. It's ninety six percent. So, what is specificity and what is sensitivity? Because tell me, what is specificity and what is sensitivity? Not about this investigation. What do you understand by specificity and what do you understand by sensitivity? Ability to rule out a false negative is a false positive is a specific. Sorry, sensitive test will detect all the all the digits. So it is likely that a false negative is high in a test which is sensitive, and a false positive will be a false negative will be. No, no. Just tell me. Okay. I'm taking. Just give me the de definition. Yeah. Just. Ability to rule out. There is an to N. There is an N in sensitivity, and there is a P yes, in sir. specificity. Now, just tell me all what is sensitivity and what is specificity. Just simple words. Positive out of all uh, infected. Infected. Oh, use uh, the word. Use the correct word. Sensitivity. Nah. So ability to default positive. So negative in disease and positive in health. Thank you. Negative in disease, positive in health. That's the definition. Well done. Okay. So negative in disease, positive in health. That is called as sensitivity and specificity. The N N is in sensitivity tells you negative in disease. That's the definition. That's what I want to hear in the exam. In the exam, I want to hear that word. I don't want your description. I know you understand it. The positive in disease level, negative. In disease, positive in health. That is the answer I was looking for. Okay, this is a standard answer. This is a statistical definition of sensitivity and specificity. Look for the N in sensitivity, negative in disease. Look for the P in specificity, positive in health. Thank you, Simran. Well done. Okay, so a negative biopsy does not exhibit malignancy. That is the problem with all of this. That you may actually a CT guided biopsy may have Puncture the wrong area, and you might actually still have a tumor in the rest. So, what would you do if the CT guided biopsy came back negative? Uh, I'll explain the patient that the biopsy is negative, and we need a diagnosis. I'll schedule patient for a, a surgical biopsy. Actually, two poss possibilities you can do. One is you can repeat a CT guided biopsy. Okay, that is that is acceptable. Uh, a second ct guided biopsy is acceptable but of course if the patient insists and if you are not very confident about your radiologist you can ask for a surgical biopsy okay 
So that's the answer. So if it, so when you're counseling a patient who has had a negative CT guided virus, this is the question I ask you. How will you counsel a patient who has had a negative CT guided biopsy in a solitary pulmonary nodule? That's the question it comes. So when you counsel, you must tell him two options. One is you can repeat the CT guided biopsy or you can do a surgical biopsy. Okay, that's the answer. Clear? Okay, what else will you do with the tissue? Besides histology, what else will you do? In fact, what are all the things? You have done a CT guided biopsy. What do you want to send it for? What do you want to send the specimen for? Tumor markers. No, no, first do basic things. Now, what do you want to send the thing for? Sir, for You've got a specimen in your hand. Absolutely. What is it? Absolutely and tumor marker. Histopathology and tumor marker. In the frozen section. Culture. What? My question is very specific. What in an, in the theater? I've just taken a biopsy and I told you as my as my second in command that can you just send this specimen? What will you fill out the forms for? Frozen section. Yeah, if you're not sure you'll do frozen section, but what <laughs> which departments will you send the form the specimen to? Histopathology. If this is tuberculosis, what are you going to do in histology man? Culture. Culture. Culture, yeah. culture sensitivity, microbiology, PCR. histology, and immunocyte, immunohistology. And if there's <laughs> fluid with it, you will also stand for cytology. You're done. <laughs> this is now, 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 this is, uh, you know, this is why students come out and say that the examiner was really horrible and he grilled me and he really was, uh, you know, trying to pull me down. But the question is an everyday question, it's not difficult. I didn't ask you anything difficult in a historical well, culture, microbiology, uh, TB culture separately. You will also send for histopathology. You will also send for tumor marker. And the problem is most people, when I ask this question, will tell me tumor markers or genetic uh, profiling. And that, that is the problem in the exam. This is exactly what happens. It's not that you don't know these answers. These are all everyday answers. But you give me the most unlikely answer. You talk about immunohistochemistry before talking about culture, sensitivity, microbiology, TB, gene expert and then everything else okay all right sorry guys i'm i'm getting a bit frustrated and agitated but this is common things that happen in the exam okay are you guys still with me or you have lost interest no sir with you <laughs> okay sir. yes still <laughs> so am, am i am i getting upset over anything wrong <laughs> you know when you talk in an exam talk common things first okay so don't forget microbiology, don't forget culture, don't forget TB, uh, don't forget histopathology, don't forget cytology for the fluid that came out, and of course, uh, genomics. So now tell me what genomics will you look for? Simran, you take the question. What are the few genomics? Give me one or two names, Bas. Uh, just one or two names. I don't want anything dramatic, just simple names. So gene sequencing? Yeah, yeah, but what, what are you looking for? Specific markers? EGFR. EGFR. Very good. EGFR. EGFR. And next generation sequencing. Okay. Generation. So this is a, this is also there in the guidelines. That when you send uh, for G, genomics, you do send for EGFR and next generation sequencing. But uh, they are only suggested, not definitive at the moment. But it will become more and more sensitive. Okay. What is the role of liquid biopsy? So, what is liquid so, biopsy? So, so sorry, so sorry to interrupt you, sir. So yeah, these, uh, these, these gene sequencing and all these stuff will go to the immunohistopathology, sir? Yeah, yeah, it will all go to immunohistopathology and they take it out of the same specimen. So they cut it in the specimen. You must tell them that we want gene sequencing so that they save specimen for that. Okay. So what so is the, liquid do, We do, yeah, sorry, we do TTF. We do TTR yeah, yeah. and CK20, all those things. That is a yeah, yeah. The whole, There's a whole list. Okay, there's a whole list. If it's mesothelioma, what? If it's sarcoma, it's different. 
So just the basic things I want you to know. Okay, there's a whole list of gene markers. If you want, when I do a lung cancer, I talk about gene markers. This is solitary pulmonary nodule, so I didn't want to spend too much time on that. But there is a whole list of tumor markers that you must know. Okay, all right. What is liquid biopsy? The circulating tumor cells uh, can be separated. I mean, uh, it is done on the blood. But Good. So it is looking for cancer markers and cancer cells in the blood. That is liquid biopsy. Okay. And the sample that is sent is blood, not the tissue. Okay. But at the moment in lung cancer, there is no role for liquid biopsy. But uh, tissue biopsy is the one that we look for. Okay. All right. Thank God we have reached this spot. I need to take a deep breath. I need some water. So two minutes break. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Toilet break, so I better put my headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys. Right. Hello, are you still there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. This whole talk is supposed to begin now. All right. Yes, sir. This whole case presentation is actually here now, but we spend too much time on the others. But that's okay. All right. So basically, uh, <clears throat> whenever you have a solid pulmonary, solitary pulmonary nodule. Uh, follow one of the two or three guidelines. Okay, there are three or four guidelines. Tell me the guidelines that you know, Nikhil. The Don't ACC. tell me the details, just the name of the guidelines. So one is NCCP guidelines. NCCN. NCCN guidelines. What else? What was I referring to all this while? The pre-op evaluation. BTS. BTS guidelines. BTS, British Thoracic Oncology. These are standard guidelines okay so nccn acct or bts so the commonest one is acct okay so most people actually follow this and they know this or they follow also nccn but i'll take you through just know one of them it, you don't need to know all of them okay so if it's a solid nodule it depends on whether it's a solid or it's a non-solid nodule okay so if it's a solid nodule, there are two markers, less than eight, more than eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember this. Just remember what I yes. just said. Less than eight and more than eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you also look for if it's uh, more risk. than eight, you are if it's more than eight, you have to assess the surgical risk. Okay? And whether mm -hmm. it's low to moderate or high, the, the pathway changes. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. And uh, if it is less than eight. Then again, do the risk factors. And if the risk factors are uh, are low, then four, four to six, six eight. And then if the risk factor is high, then again, four, four to six, six to eight. So this is important. This last line is important. And we'll come to that in a minute. 
So now come to the guidelines. Now, Nikhil, this is very important. Okay, this part is very important. If everybody is still with me, 17 people still there. So what is the first? If you have a chest X-ray or a CT scan with a nodule, what do you do? So first, don't uh, read from here. What do you do? Does the previous images available? Always review previous images. That is why whenever I tell you, I'm very adamant about this. Review previous images because it's a one C level of guideline. Okay, very 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 important. Okay, if the nodule has been stable for more than two years, what are you going to do? Sir, I'll counsel the patient and uh, uh, repeat images after. Uh... Hey, 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 stop, stop. My question was nodule is stable for more than two years. There is no so change. It's, it's a highly benign. It's, it's just highly benign, stable disease. What are you going to do to the patient? The patient will require no more follow-up. No more follow-up. Follow yeah, no more follow-up. No additional diagnostic imaging. Okay, so that's the second guideline. Now the things in blue are very important. You must get this in your brain. You must get this. So the first one is prior imaging. Very, very important. Okay, if it's stable for more than two years, no, no additional more. imaging. Part of the guideline, no additional imaging. Okay, if there is it's an indeterminate... No imaging. Additional imaging. Means no, no imaging, but... But he will still come for a clinical follow-up? No, not necessary. No. Not necessary. You can disturb not the guy necessary. until he has yes. symptoms or he himself wants to okay. come back. But according to guidelines, okay. you don't need to see him again. Okay, you don't do anything more for this guy. Unless if you want to do, you would just do a chest x -ray. Okay, but according to guidelines, you don't need to see him again. There is no advantage of seeing him again. Okay, if you have an indeterminate nodule on chest X-ray, what is the next investigation? Chest X-ray, you just saw your patient, CT chest, okay? That's mentioned in the guideline. Thin slice sections through the nodule, and I told you 1.25 millimeters, okay? Uh, 1.25 mm, all right, okay. So this is what is the summary of the pathway. This is quite important. If it is less than eight, CT surveillance, remember this, less than 8 CT surveillance, 8 to 15 millimeters, CT surveillance with an optional PET CT, biopsy and or resection. If it is more than 15 centimeters, no CT surveillance, you have to take do a PET and biopsy it. It's very clear cut in the guidelines. Everybody okay with this? Have you understood what I just said? Hello? Yes, sir. I'm giving you the gist of this management. Give, give me feedback. I, I feel that I'm lost people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is in a solitary part solid, more than 50% ground glass nodule. Okay? Less than 8, CT surveillance. If it is 8 to 15, CT surveillance with optional PET CT, biopsy and or resection. So here it's still optional. If it is more than 15 meter, millimeters, you definitely need to do something about it, okay? All right, the second one, I'm going to go through these tables very clearly. If it is a solid nodule, so there are three nodules we said, there is solid, semi-solid, and ground glass. So we just did semi-solid. If it is a solid nodule, then the pathway changes. The pathway is four, four to eight, more than eight. Did you understand this or no? Yes, sir. Less than four, you yes. can just low risk. You don't need to do anything. If it has got high risk, you need to do a CT surveillance, which means a smoker, okay, or a strong family history of cancer. If it is between four and eight, you still need to do CT surveillance for low risk, no risk or high risk in a solid nodule. But if more than eight, if it's a low risk CT surveillance, low or moderate risk, you need a PET scan. And then discuss with the patient, and you may or may not do biopsy. And if it is high risk, you definitely stage him for treatment. Did you get this? These three slides are all that you have to understand. The third slide is coming in a minute. The third slide is in a pure ground glass. So in a pure ground glass, less than five and more than five. 
if it's less than five, no follow up, more than five, annual CT surveillance for three years. This is all that you need to know. Everything I discussed from here onwards is based on these three slides. Did you understand? I'll go through it again. I, the sequence has got a little reversed. It should have been this solid, but it's okay. So if it is part solid, part solid, then eight, eight to 15, more than 50. More than. Part solid, okay? If it is solid, then it is four, four to eight, more than eight. And if it is GGO, it is five and more than five. Is everybody clear about this? This is very important to understand. If you understand these three slides, the whole guideline becomes a piece of cake. So it is basically referring to the density of the lesion. Absolutely, and it's volumetric density. It is, it is always, all guidelines are based on volumetric density, not on diameter. Okay, it's, it's a calculation of diameter. This 8 millimeter is, yes, it's a diameter, but really we're looking at the volumet volumetric density. So part solid, solid, and GGO. Solid is less than 4, 4 to 8, more than 8. Part solid is 8, less than 8, 8 to 15, more than 15. And a GGO is less than five and more than five. Is this clear? Please, please understand these three slides. That's all you need to know. That is the summary of the whole management pathway. Yeah? Yes, yes or no? Sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is all you need to know. These three slides, write it down, make a column. And so when you come back to this, you come back to this one, you know, it all becomes clear. All this is so complicated. It's very, very complicated, this. You cannot, you feel as if you cannot remember all this. But really, the answer is, is lies in this table. Part solid, solid, GG. GGO is less than five, more than five. Very easy. Solid is four, four to eight, more than eight. And semi-solid is less than eight, 8 to 15 and more than 15. Is this clear? This is the key to this whole topic. These three slides. Once you know these three slides, there is no way anybody can quiz you any further. And in the exam, don't try to talk about uh, NCCN or flesh stars. Just say, I know the others, but I know ACCP guidelines very well. And in my clinical practice, we follow ACCP guidelines. Full stop. That's all you need to answer. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, now I will go into detail, okay? So now you tell me what you do. If you have got a solid nodule more than 80 millimeter, what is the guideline saying? What are you supposed to do? I just told you previously. So what are you going to do? Biopsy. Yeah, but before that, what do you want to do? Pet scan. Before that, what do you want to do? You have to estimate the, the probability, probability of malignancy. Probability. Yeah, you have to estimate the probability of management, okay? By either qualitative or quantitative methods. Both of them are there. So qualitative is obviously you look at the scan and you estimate speculated margins and things like that. But quantitative is the validated method, the three methods we spoke about, the Mayo's and the VA's and the Hubble's, okay? All right. So if it is a low probability of cancer, more than eight, what are you going to do? Low probability is 5 to 65, okay? What are you going to do? It's a solid nodule. The tumor is more than it's 8. Skin. So we do a PET scan. Yeah. We discuss with the patient and do a PET scan. You just do a PET scan. That's it. You just do a PET scan. Okay? Very good. If it is a solid more than 8, but high probability of cancer, what are you going to do? Direct biopsy. Yeah, you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do a PET scan and a biopsy. Okay, so no pet, further pet imaging. You just go ahead and biopsy it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, where am I? I lost my slides. Okay, so anybody with a high probability of cancer has to have a biopsy. 
very very clear okay now these are some intermediate stage they're talking about what to do and the guidelines so patient preference is there in this mention in this when do you do a serial ct scan follow up in a patient with more than 80 millimeters is there any situation when you would do a serial ct scan low probability of malignancy very low probability less than 5% because we said even in a low probability you still do a pet scan but in a very low probability you can do a serial ct follow up okay all right if you have done a pet scan and it is negative in a patient with a low probability then you can do a serial ct follow up are you okay hello yes sir yes sir uh, sir would you like to mention the time of serial cts yeah yeah it will all come don't worry <laughs> this is guideline it is it is all there don't worry okay it will come i i don't want to mention too many things at the same time because you will get confused so it will come systematically okay so first is clear we said this and if you've done a needle biopsy and you got it non diagnostic and a pet scan is non hypermetabolic but the size is still 8 mm and the tumor is still solid you still want to follow this up with the ct okay yes or no yes it's a bit confusing yes. i know but let me just go through it and you will understand it as we go through so what is the protocol of ct now you asked me that question who was that salman was it you who asked me that yes, question yes sir it was me salman so salman what do you think is the protocol that you want to follow well uh uh yes it is three it is low probability your voice is breaking a little bit salman i i can't hear you very well can you hold your microphone away it may be yeah Well, well, I suppose it should be two to three, two to three years because of low probability. Five percent. No, 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 no. We have to talk about uh, uh, the first one. You can't do three years later, na? Two years later. Always there are two or three CT scans. So what is the gap between the CT scans? That's what we are asking. It's eight oh, millimeters. It's eight millimeters, Salman, and it is a solid right. nodule. Then, you cannot just then it do a next CT. Three to six months. So the first one is done three to six months. You are absolutely right. So the first one is done three to six months. The problem is it's eight millimeters, so it's quite a big size, and it is solid. Okay. So first one is done at three to six millimeters. No change. What are you going to do next? Take it. Okay. Ex extend the time. So what's the next one? Uh, I think if six months is not changed, then I'll go to a uh, uh, year or so. Yeah, so nine to twelve months. Good. So if in the first between three to six there is no change, the next one you would do it is at nine to twelve months. And then what would you do? Well, definitely I'll jump a year more. Yeah. So it's still eight millimeters. You're worried. So what is the next one? So I'll go year I have done. So I'll go for two years, three years. Okay, so the guideline says eighteen to twenty-four months. Okay, so two years is correct. Two, two years. Okay. Okay. So two years That's is correct. Right. And, if, right. and if it is still negative, what are you going to do? No further follow-up. Disturb the patient. Yeah, so no, no further, further follow-up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So does this make sense now? Now you start to under. When you just yes, read sir. this directly, you cannot understand it, Salman. It becomes very confusing. So that is why I'm trying to go systematically, okay, one by one. So, so one when question, you have sir. a guy, yeah, come, come, who's that, Simran? So, 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 so this is now for uh, nodules which are more than eight millimeters, sir. Yeah, for more so, than eight millimeters. So, for nodules less than eight millimeters, then we have to follow. Then we have to assess whether the we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Than, okay, right. Simran, it is, it is there. The guideline I'm is very, very clear. Just being abreast, sir. I'm, <laughs> now I'm getting a little difficult catching up. <laughs> So I'm just, sorry, just it's tiring. It's no, two no, no, hours, no, no, Salman. Uh, Salman, no, no, we are already two hours down the road, and I know. the brain I know. is ceasing, ceasing to function. If you want, I can, I can stop no, now, no. and we can do no, it no, again. No, 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 no
later two of us have to sit and do it some we have to find one partner and uh, do it but, but yeah yes. but, but you, when i am explaining it to you you know i do this clinically uh, every day so my yes, understanding sir. is different that is why i can take you through it and make you understand yes, this so 8 mm solid nodular theek hai you have done a ct scan at 3 months common sense you do one as uh, salman said double the time so 9 to 12 months and then he again said double the time so 18 to 24 that's what we do is that okay yes sir yes sir i'm telling you all this is confusing because you haven't seen the first three slides and understood or grasped it completely so i'm going through the basics but my suggestion to you is just go back to my three slides which i showed you keep it in front of you and all of this will make sense okay thank you very much and and the recommendation is thin slice non contrast low dose ct i ask you this okay should you do contrast or non contrast and the recommendation is thin slice non contrast low dose ct okay radial using thin sections and non contrast low dose technique okay and you have to calculate the area the volume and mass of the nodule okay so this is important is this area the volumetry is more important than the diameter so it's not one di two dimensional it's actually three dimensional calculations are you with me still or no 17 people one has dropped out good so one person has dropped out so we are getting there we'll reach a point where i think 8 or 10 will drop out and only the three of you will be there so okay <laughs> now you got a solitary pulmonary nodule with clear evidence of malignant growth what are you going to do uh so um, biopsy let me go back to salman i like the way he answered so salman Surgical. Definitely, sir. If, if it is, uh, what are we going to do? If it is showing an evidence of malignancy, then definitely we have to take it out. Whatever procedure no, no, we want. No, no, no. You shouldn't use the word "take it out" straight away. You should use the word okay. "biopsy." Biopsy. Okay, we will do a biopsy, sir. Surgical or non-surgical? Biopsy could be surgical or non-surgical, but "take it out" may not be the right answer here. So you would actually biopsy. You either do a non-surgical biopsy or a surgical biopsy. A surgical biopsy could be an excisional biopsy. That's okay, but don't jump to. You could do a CT CT guided biopsy. Yeah, so okay. it's important. And if nodule decreases in size, if the solid nodule decreases in size, then follow up to two years for resolution and non growth. So all along we've said two years is the point that we have to look for. Don't discharge him before two years. Yeah. Okay. All right. So tell me. a solid nodule more than 8 mm uh what are the non surgical things available to you quickly guys don't waste time now we've done this all in the previous things what is available to you so the sputum cytology yeah oh. the whole thing the whole gamut any one of those yeah. you can do okay central or peripheral okay so when clinical <laughs> Okay, this is when you do that. Okay, so non-surgical. So this is all the types of situations when you want to do a non-surgical biopsy as opposed to a surgical biopsy. Okay, so it's okay. Surgical diagnosis. How do you do a surgical diagnosis? When clinical probability of cancer is high, when there is intense metabolic activity in a PET scan, a non-surgical biopsy suggests malignancy, and a fully informed patient prefers surgical treatment. Okay, so this is when you do a biopsy. All right. So how do you do it? By VATS. Actually, it is recommended. Solitary pulmonary nodule. One C evidence that you should do it by VATS. Okay. And then other things are the advanced localization techniques. Means using ultrasound and using. Uh, okay. Wow. Let me ask you the question. How? What are the advanced localizing techniques for finding an SPN on VATS? Give me three or four. Uh, sir, image guided wire localization. Very good. Wire localization. One. Uh, image okay. guided needle localization. And uh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? What did you mean by needle localization? Uh, sir, put in a needle, CT guided needle, and come needle. to the paper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, dye injecting a dye. Okay. Dye injection. Uh, 
How do you inject the dye? Which which route we will you take? Uh, there are sir two routes. Uh, one either transcutaneous or through endobronchial. Very good. So transcutaneous or endobronchial. If you have to do it endobronchially, how do you inject the dye? What technique do you use? What is it called as? Come on. What is the uh, tool that yes, you use? Electro- endobronchially. If, if you have to inject the dye, Simran said it earlier. Yeah, navigational bronchos. Electromagnetic navigational bronchos. Navigation. You cannot just a small nodule in the periphery. You will never reach it, or you'll never know where it is without an EMN. Okay. All right. Oh my God! It's getting too much for you guys, isn't it? This is exactly what I showed you earlier. This is, see this slide, and this is from that first slide that I showed. Okay, sorry about the the top. It's not more than eighty millimeters. Okay, it's just what are the indications for surgical diagnosis. So if it is four to six millimeters, if it's less than four millimeters, don't do anything. Okay, four to six, you do a twelve month low dose non contrast CT. Four to six, no change, no more follow up. Six to eight millimeters, you do six to twelve months and eighteen to twenty four months. So let me just come back to this again. Sorry, the title is wrong. Forget the title. Okay, title is not the one. So we did more than eight millimeters. Okay, solid nodule. We said we might do a follow up CT scan if the probability of cancer is low. We said that if we do have to do a follow up CT scan, we will do it at three to six months, six to nine months, and eighteen to twenty-four months. Everybody understood that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you still with me, or is it getting too much? No, no, you are revising. You are revising what you said. So, right, sir. I am revising yes. what I said. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, a yes, sir. solid. nodule more than 8 mm low probability of cancer three follow up ct scans is what you will do three to six mm months first one six to 12 months second one and 18 to 24 months third one okay if in the same patient if the size of nodule was less than 4 mm but low probability of sir you don't need to follow him up you can actually say you're okay you can disturb the patient but patient must agree to that if he wants he can come back for a follow up ct but not necessarily according to guidelines in the same patient if the size was 4 to 6 mm are you still with me yes sir if in the same patient the size was 4 to 6 mm there's only one ct needed at 12 months which will be a non contrast low dose ct and if that is shows no change in size you disturb the patient these are all solid nodules we are talking about okay if in the same patient the size was 6 to 8 mm then you do one ct at 6 to 12 months you would repeat the second ct at 18 to 24 months and if both of these are unchanged you would discharge the patient and if there was more than one nodule or there were multiple nodules then the follow up is according to the largest size so you do you you fit them into this category but the largest size is what you work with now is it making sense what i just said yes sir i want others yes, to comment as well because i i have too many people here and they are getting uh, yes it is quite understandable now did you understand what i just said very important yeah yeah it's quite on one hand you have solid nodule on the other hand you have a low probability of cancer 
then the size of the nodule matters. More than eight millimeters, we said three, 12 months, 18 to 24 months, yeah? And then discharge. If it is less than four, no more. If it is four to six, just one CT at 12 months. If it is six to eight, two CTs, one at six months to 12 months, and 18 to 24 months. No change discharge. And if there are multiple nodules, the size of the largest nodule matters. Is it making sense now? Yes. Can yes, I sir. say something, sir? Yeah, yeah, you can say. These so are there are two important things in these nodules that I understand. Uh -huh. One is the density. The other is the size greater than eight. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Solid nodule and size. That is how we categorize. And that's how we follow up these patients. So now solid is clear. The, the, my first slide should be clear now. And if it is, if the risk of malignancy is higher, if it is low to moderate, you would do a PET scan. If the risk of malignancy is high, then you would do a PET scan and a biopsy or an excision. Does it make sense now? Is it clear? Everything should be clear about solid nodules. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's becoming clear now. Yeah? Okay. So let me just go through this. Same thing again. It's just come back twice. Okay. Hello, everybody still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we come to grand glass. Easy. Less than five more. Less than five, more than five. So if it is less than five, no further evaluation. No further evaluation. Yeah? Mm. If it is more than five, then these are the things you have to do. If it is more than five, annual surveillance for at least three years. Look for the solid and the non-solid component. If the non-solid component grows, then further evaluation and resection. Anything grows, whether it's a solid or non if it has developed a solid component or if it has developed a non-solid component, which is growing in size, you have to resect it or you have to do a biopsy and resect it, okay? Early three month follow-up for non-solid more than 10 millimeters. Did it make sense or no? So let me go through this again. Okay, this is important. Let me go through. So if pure GGO, less than five, don't do anything. More than five, you have to do at least once a year a CT scan for three years. Okay? If a solid component develops, then this is a sign that he is developing malignancy. Then you have to resect it after doing a biopsy, or you can do a surgical biopsy. If the size of this is more than 10 millimeters, okay, in an early three month follow up for non solid, if it was more than 10 millimeters, you have to resect it. Did it make sense or no? This is the yes, guide. Sir. Take your time afterwards and go through it. This is very important to understand. So GGOs have two components. One is less than five, one is more than five. More than five, one CT scan every year for three years. If it increases in size or if it solidifies, resect it. Did it make sense? So, uh, between 5 to 10, we have to have a surveillance. When it comes to 10, we have to reset it. Yeah, if it's more than 10, then think of malignancy and start thinking yeah. of surgical biopsy or non-surgical biopsy and resection. So between 5 to 10, we have to watch closely. You have to watch closely once a year, every year for three years. But what you look it's for is not just increase in size, but you look for whether is it solidifying. That is the key point here. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you make it? I am sorry. This is very confusing. But uh, you know, it is important that you understand things. Okay. So the third part of that discussion. Vikas, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it making sense what I'm saying, Vikas? Yes, sir. Definitely. Is, sir. is it is it confusing more or is it confusing less? No, no, sir. It is absolutely. A cup of coffee will give it. It's clearing the basics. Coffee will remove all the all the confusions. Uh, but unfortunately, they haven't invented Zoom coffee as yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> okay. So now the third part of this discussion. Everybody still with me or no? See, I'm not asking you questions on this. I'm actually explaining this to you. Simran, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So now the third part of the discussion. Yeah, part solid. That means 50, more than 50% ground glass or there is a solid element to it, okay? So CT surveillance, 3, 12, 24, exactly like the solid nodule. You may survey this annually for a further one to three years. This is this is a may depending upon discussion with the patient. Excuse me, sir. And just one minute, one minute. Let me finish this. And if the solid part grows or it becomes more solid, consider malignancy and resecting. Okay? Yeah. Somebody was asking me something. Yeah, this 24 months. This one to three years after 24 months or it includes one, yeah, to, one three to three years, years from... after 24 months. After 24 months, okay. So it will be five years of free. For a further one to three years, further. The word here is further. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is like deviation from uh, if there's no change in tools, you can charge. So there is one exception where you can still follow. Yeah, anybody after with a low years. risk of malignancy, you can yeah. discharge very happily. But when you have a yes. person with a moderate or a high risk of malignancy, but he's still got a GGO in the lungs. You cannot say that he's not uh, malignant. And so then you keep him under surveillance for five years. This is usually for somebody with a high risk of malignancy. Yeah, the last part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. One minute, my, my headphones are... Uh, uh, just one minute. Okay, I've stopped the relay because my headphones are finished. And so let me just discuss. Okay. okay, so we did this. Yeah, everybody understood this or no? I know it's getting too much, but you'll have to read it yourself. But a little bit of my explanation may add value when you read it the next time. Okay. Now, pure parts, pure part solid, pure gun glass, but more than 80 millimeters. Yeah, three months, if the nodules are still persist, then do a PET scan, non-surgical biopsy and or surgery. So a bigger nodule, which is part solid, part GGO, you are worried that this could be infection. So you give him three months, give him antibiotics and then repeat the CT. And if the nodule is still there, then worry that this could be cancer. And so get a PET scan done and biopsy it. So GGOs are more worrisome than solid nodules. Did you understand that? Yes or no? Yes, yes, sir. As you said, the density is important. Yeah. So if you, you have to give them antibiotics, that it's part of the guidelines because you're thinking about whether is this infection. So you repeat the CT scan at three months after having treated antibiotics and all that. And if the nodule is still there, take it out. It's it's sign of cancer. Okay. All right, this is it. This is all that is to understand. This is the three slides which I put at the start. I just went into more details of the three slides. Yeah. Now these are all specific situations. 
these are extra things when there are more than one nodule what do you do so when there are more than one nodule evaluate each nodule individually but the largest size nodule is the one that matters okay and always look for metastasis don't don't forget about metastasis when there is more than one nodule and this must always be discussed in an mdt in fact everything that i'm talking about should be discussed in an mdt so this is the pathway for multiple nodules okay. go through it it's it's not difficult you will understand it yeah so really i'm going to just go back to that slide this is the slide look through the slide again in the knowledge of what i've just explained part solid solid ggo so if you know these three slides then it's okay if you don't know the final details yeah okay thank you very much guys i think it's getting too much now i just got a few more slides to finish with if you want to know are you okay if i finish these rest of the things because we are in the middle of food discussion yes sir suppose sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Just talk yes, sir. a little bit about the bts guidelines just know a few things i'll just get <laughs> important points out of the bts guidelines surgery should be wax and treatment is lobectomy okay that is what is said there is some new evidence coming up with segmentectomy but at this stage the guidelines are still talking about lobectomy okay and if you don't have a pre op histology then on table you can wedge frozen section and if it turns out to be a cancer you can do lobectomy yeah if the patient is compromised in terms of uh, respiratory function then anatomical segmentectomy is acceptable but again look at the level of evidence is d but now more and more evidence is coming supporting anatomical segmentectomy but this is the answer in an exam in an exam you should say that a solitary pulmonary nodule i'll go in by wads i will do a lobectomy and if i don't have a histology pre operatively i don't have a ct guided biopsy then i'll wedge it i'll frozen section it i'll do a lobectomy and i'll do a systematic nodule dissection if the patient has compromised respiratory functions i can do an anatomical segment this is the answer for you okay yes sir oh, no this is very clear cut nothing to worry about just say this in the exam and you'll pass through there is some role for anatomical segmentectomy if frozen section is not possible so if it's a deep lesion or it's a central lesion and you can't get a frozen section you can't wedge it out then they say you can do a segmentectomy you understood this point or no just repeat it sir what did you say okay let me If? so one minute let me go back to this one so here you are you have done everything okay suppose the lesion is deep ha huh? you've got this 1 cm lesion which is deep line in the uh apical segment of the lower lobe is deep you can't wedge it out you can't do a frozen section so the yeah, guideline yeah. says in that situation you're okay to do a segmentectomy without diagnosis you understood that it's a diagnostic yes, anatomical segmentectomy but the important thing for this is the node should be negative if there are nodes then you biopsy the nodes you understood or no yes sir and intraoperative localization tool should be used it's recommended in the guidelines okay and for ggns now more and more sublobar resections are coming into picture but look at this d okay it's a very low level of recommendations but now more data is coming from china korea and japan which is talking about sublobar resections for ggn but they are still not in the guidelines happy with this yes sir yes sir okay 
So when do you what do you do? What are the non-surgical treatments without pathological diagnosis? Nikhil, tell me. If the patient is unfit for surgery, what are you going to do? Uh, I said steroidic, uh, steroidic radio ablation. Yes. Yeah. So is FABR or RFA? Okay. SBRT. Cryo, SBRT cryo ablation. If he is unfit for SBRT and surgery, radical therapy is an option. Mm -hmm. And there is somebody who is talking about inhaled corticosteroids. There is no role for that. And there is no role for antibiotic use in the treatment of SPM as a standard protocol. Okay, But in a GGO where you are suspecting it, you may use it. But it's not part of the guidelines. Uh, sir? Yeah, yeah. Quickly, come. Uh, if he's unfit for surgeries, he's unfit for chemo as well. Possibly. That's why chemo is not mentioned in the guidelines. Non, we're not mentioned. Radical radiotherapy is mentioned. Mentioned. Okay, so go through these things and you will understand. See this one I showed you? Everything that I spoke about is here in this slide. Less than four, four to six, six to eight. This is for a solid nodule, okay? And and it's all talking about it. So go through these charts, and now it will make sense. These charts will start to make sense after we've discussed all these things. Yeah? Yes, sir. Which are the other guidelines we spoke about? The fleshness, NCC and BTS. And now there are Asian modified guidelines as well, which I am unfortunately an author, or fortunately an author. Okay, so these are these are the these were published in chest, and if you look through this paper, I am one of the authors of this paper. So these are local guidelines, local challenges, and this is the paper that came out: evaluation of pulmonary nodules, clinical practical consensus guidelines for Asia. Okay, so go through this, and you will find my name here. And uh, there are some modifications in the Asian guidelines because we have focused more on the fact that we have TB in the area. But I won't discuss that today, okay? In this, you'll get too confused by that. Okay, thank you very much, guys. These are all the studies that you have to look at. Thank you very much for the marvelous things. That was really- I'm very marvelous. sorry, it was so too long, but it is important that you guys understand this. I'm not sure I understand. You shut up, Siri. <laughs> 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 okay, guys, let me stop share. I am sorry, it's been a long day. So, please put it on the let me just YouTube. Recording is still on, I think. Yeah, yes, sir. Stop recording. <laughs>